Hey everyone, Keith McGinnis here with KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. So this stone gray marble uh, really, really turned out nice. And so let's just get to how I created it. Um, with all of my projects, I like to fog my edges and then I'll also fog the surface as well. Uh, it just gives it a little bit more depth and uh, another layer. Then the next step that I did was I applied a wash coat using black alumilite dye. There are times, it wasn't necessary, but there are times I looked like to put down a wash coat, you can see how translucent this is. And then once I get it rubbed out with my hand, if there's any areas where the epoxy is very translucent or transparent, um, it really adds a lot of depth because that wash coat will show through. You can kind of see how I'm being somewhat directional as I rub that in. So now I'm putting my colors down. I'm just using three colors. I'm using pearl white from Just Resin. I'm using white metallic, which is a polycolor mica powder and I'm using titanium by Just Resin also. And you can see as I'm pouring these colors out, um, I've stated before I don't like pouring my colors in even lines going back and forth to that, you know, kind of tiger stripe or, or candy cane type look. I like to keep it somewhat random. Um, that way when I meld the colors in, it to me it just looks a little bit more authentic. So with those three colors, once I get those poured down, I'm going to meld those colors in after I meld those colors in, then I'm going to kind of stand back a little bit and assess. I did keep some of the Alumalite black dye uh, in case I was going to need it, in case I needed a little bit of a contrast. So I first poured out the um, pearl white, I believe, then the titanium, and now I'm pouring out the white metallic. And you can see on there, uh, and I'm just using three ounces per square foot as well. But you can see I got those colors really in no distinct pattern, but I do kind of have them going along with the flow. And that's what I'm doing right now is I'm melding those colors in. I don't want to mix those colors. Um, all I'm trying to do is kind of fill the dead space. But I'm also using my hand to kind of carry those colors from one to the other, again, to try to keep those as random as I can. And so once I get those colors in, I'll get it torched out and kind of let it move around a little bit. Here what I'm doing is I felt like I need a little bit more white and, and also some of the Alumilite black dye that I had left over from the wash coat. And so now what I'm doing is just kind of, you know, looking things over and see how I like it and uh, see if I need a little bit more of this there, a little bit more of that there, um, but just kind of assess. And then once I torch that out and heat it up, which is what I'm doing now, uh, then I'm going to give that a chance to kind of settle down a little bit, give that a chance to soften. Um, and then what will happen is the metallics are going to And because those metallics settle, a lot of times I'll wait, oh, 15 to 30 minutes, uh, depending on what more I'm going to do to that design. But I'll wait 15 to 30 minutes to allow that epoxy to start to set up just a little bit. Then I'm going to go back over, I'm going to remeld it with my hand. And what that does is that wakes those metallics up and kind of brings those back to the surface again. Uh, but then you got to be careful when you do that and then you go to torch it. Uh, don't get too carried away with the torch. You don't want to heat it up too much and then have those metallics go right back to where they were before. Uh, if you'll notice, I am torching in the direction of my flow of the design. If I wanted some lateral lines, which actually look really cool, with this design, um, I, I really didn't. And that's why I kept my torching kind of going uh, along with the flow. So now that I've got everything melded the way I want it, now I am going to uh, start adding some veins. I don't know if many of you have tried this, but you notice I don't have any paint on my uh, tongue depressor. Um, you can run a vein just by running your stick through the metallics, and it actually is a really cool effect. It disrupts the metallics, um, and then uh, you'll see here, it, it's kind of hard to tell on the video, but after I run that vein, you'll kind of see some shadowing there, and it really leaves uh, some really cool veins, kind of some, um, oh, the not real prominent, and of course you're not adding any colors, but uh, it, as you can see there in the video, it does create some cool veins. So I'm gonna run some of those in there, and then after I get those done, then I'm going to add some color. And in this particular restroom, uh, there is some, well, I would call it a navy blue. So that's the colors I'm going to use to create some veins. I'm going to use navy blue and black and white, um, which 
ended up giving it a really, really cool accent, and it's going to tie in really well in the bathroom. So it isn't just the gray and black. We've got some blue in there as well, and, and that really gives it some, some pretty cool visual interest. And so here I'm, I'm still using my stick without any paint on it to create some veins. You know, once you start creating some veins in there and you see how cool they look, um, that's why I kept going on. So as the uh, epoxy starts to settle, those are going to become a lot more faint, but they're going to be there. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding that navy blue, the black, and the white. Now, uh, adding white to veins, you have to be really careful because it can take over. But um, when you add white uh, gloss Rust-Oleum white spray paint to a vein and... In a minute here, you'll see that I take the heat gun and I use the heat gun to move those veins around a little bit. You can get those veins to open up and to close off. To me, it gives it a much more uh, authentic look. There's the white. See how prominent it looks now? But uh, as I get the heat gun on there and start to move that around, it actually looks like a very, very thin, um, almost looks like a creek bed uh, if you were looking down from, from high above. But it really, really adds a cool effect. So that's all I'm doing now is using my heat gun and uh, like Mike used to call it, painting with air. <clears throat> and just moving those around to I get to the point to where I like them. Once you've used the heat gun on veins, you'll get a little bit more of an idea of what it takes to open those and close those. Stay up a little bit higher and you can open them up. Um, if you heat on each side of the vein, uh, that will allow it to open up a little bit more um, because you're, you're making uh, the epoxy more fluid. So I'm just putting the final touches on right now, and that's basically what I'm doing is um, getting the veins where I like them, and then this project is going to be done. And once I get done with this part of it, then I'm going to let it set for 24 hours, and then I'm going to come back and sand it and apply the UTC. So stay tuned to the video, and uh, you'll be able to see the process of adding the Stones Coats Ultimate Top Coat in the natural finish, which is the matte finish. Uh, really, really turned out nice. Um, the... This is actually going in a, it's a new construction uh, bar slash pool hall. And there was two bathroom vanities, one for the men's, one for the women's. This is the one that's going on the men's side. The one that's going on the women's side, I'll be posting that tutorial here soon. That was using the watercolor effect. Absolutely amazing the way that turned out. But again, that's for the ladies' restroom. And, you know, ladies deserve the best, right? So... Anyway, we'll get moving on with this and uh, get on to applying the Ultimate Top Coat. So before we get to the Ultimate Top Coat, uh, you can see how those veins kind of open and close. Let's do a flyover. I'm showing my edges right here because I know a lot of people have some issues with their edges. Um, you really have to keep an eye on those. And so after basically after I've gotten done with my project and I'm looking everything over, that's where I'm going to tend to my edges and make sure that everything is looking good. Look how that marbling looks with those colors that I use. Remember how I poured those out, but yet uh, they, they kind of blend together? And that's part of melding that with my hand of um, sometimes crossing those covers, colors in from one to the other, one to the other. Uh, there's that vein uh, that I applied in there, and you can see some of that navy blue that's in there. But it's really a very soft meld. Uh, they're soft colors. There's nothing real bold in there. But the blue really added uh, a very cool accent. I will tell you, I also tried to spritz, not tried, I did. I spritzed some uh, clear isopropyl alcohol on there. Uh, there's that vein. Take a look at that vein, and it's the heat gun that allows you to manipulate uh, those veins to get those to open and close and, and really make them look authentic. But anyway, back to the alcohol. So I spritzed the alcohol on there. Where the alcohol hit the black, it looked really cool, but where it hit the gray, it almost looked like they're, they almost look like drops, like water drops. So I took my hand over that and remelded that back in again. So here I am, I'm prepping now for the ultimate top coat. I'm using 220. Because this is only 24 hours old, uh, your paper can gum up and probably will. And then I have what I call a rubber eraser or a magic eraser, and that's what I use to keep uh, the disc clean. So once I get it sanded and I use a red Scotch-Brite pad on uh, my edges so I don't burn through with the sandpaper. Okay, I've determined I need three ounces of Ultimate Top Coat Natural and taking that three ounces, mixing that part A and part B completely in a two to one ratio 
and taking that three ounces times 0.16 uh, gives me just at uh, or just under half ounce of water. And that's what I did was added one half ounce of, and I use distilled water uh, when I do mine. <clears throat> I was not able to use a paint tray because I've only got such a small amount of uh, top coat that I'm going to use. I don't advise this unless you're really comfortable with the ultimate top coat. Uh, so here I am, I'm just pouring it directly onto the surface, and that's how I'll get my roller saturated. And I've applied enough of the Ultimate Top Coat that um, I know what amount I need to get an absolutely smooth surface. So I'm using my wet roller, I'm getting that put down on a back roll, which is what I'm doing one more time with my wet roller. Then I'm going to go over it with no pressure whatsoever with my dry roller. Once I do that, it's time to walk away. So as I finish that up, I'm going to turn the camera and what you're going to see next is a time lapse. And this time lapse is over the next 15 minutes and you'll be able to see how that UTC dries completely clear, perfectly smooth, no orange peel, no roller marks, and no lap lines. Turned out fantastic. Once again, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button for upcoming tutorials. Thanks everyone and take care.